Obviously, what's happened over the last seven years is that GLD has turned trading in gold from the, the uh, specific purvey of a, of a smaller group of futures investors to something that pretty much anyone can trade. And I think you can see that from the volume. We had a, a stretch of time this year where GLD ETF option was over 30 million, uh, sorry, GLD ETF volume was over 30 million shares a day and the option routinely trades a half a million contracts or more. So really what it's done is it's, it's brought metals, gold in particular, to the masses. And that's exactly what happened with Spiders. Spiders in, in 1993 took a futures product, the S&P 500 futures, and turned it into a physical product, the basket of, of stocks as, uh, as the SPY ETF related. Certainly, I've heard the accusation. I personally don't believe it, particularly in gold. I think gold is an enormous asset class. And while it's true that if you have a large group of investors moving towards one asset class or a group of asset classes, that will tend to drive up prices, I don't really see that buy and hold investors are speculators who are attempting to price manipulate. If you look at it, Treasuries are a huge asset class and everyone wants to hold treasuries right now and it's driven the return on treasuries in the short term to very close to zero. But I don't think people would say that speculators are inflating the price of treasuries. So I think gold is a place where people want to store value and there's $70 billion stored in the GLD ETF as of today. And as a percentage of the gold in the world, that doesn't seem like an outsize percentage of the total stockpile of gold. Obviously, as the price of gold goes up, the incentive to mine for more gold goes up. So to me, it's just a, it's a supply and demand thing. And there are a lot of people who have found this to be the most efficient way to hold a hard asset. Volatility does seem to have reached a higher I'm not sure if I want to call it plateau, but a higher range. And I would guess that that's going to pervade for at least some time. And the way we've adjusted to it is that it's become the new normal. It's no longer shocking to have, for example, the VIX bouncing around five points a day, anywhere between 25 and 40. Um, and the, the same is going on in, in the commodities. It's no longer shocking for volatility to move in large chunks. And I think one of the things that's going on is that people are treating volatility itself as an asset class. As hard as that is to believe, we have people piling in and out of pure volatility on a regular basis. And they can do that by selling options in a commodity ETF, they can sell options in an equity index ETF, or they can just flat out sell something like the VIX, the VXX, the VIX, any one of uh, the many measures of volatility that have been commoditized or securitized for the investing public to invest in. I think that over the next seven years, this asset class, and by asset class I mean all ETFs, will continue to mature. I think that the main growth, the explosive growth, is gone. I don't think we'll see the geometric uh, march higher in either total ETF volume, total ETF assets under management, or just total number of ETFs out there that we've seen over the last 10 years. But when you look at the core ETFs, and I would certainly consider GLD to be one of them, I think they're going to consolidate their hold on the investor base. I think you'll see more and more people moving away from other less pure ways to track the asset and into something. GLD, when you look at GLD, the magic of GLD is it's a physical product, so you don't have to deal with a, a monthly or quarterly futures roll. The fees to hold it are competitive, particularly if you wanted to hold a small amount of gold yourself. And uh, you know, while there are obviously, with the MF Global going down, there are questions about the security of assets in, in any institution, and uh, that's probably going to continue for, for some time, I would say that an asset class like 
the commodity ETFs, the strict commodity ETFs and not the futures-based commodity ETFs are one of the more solid structures to hold this class.